Welcome to our new Edgewonk video series on how to become a better trader using a trading journal in the most effective way. And this is going to be a four part series eventually. And we're going to progress through the different stages journaling for starters, which is this video. Then we progress to journaling for intermediate traders, advanced traders, and eventually journaling for professional traders. And we'll show you at each step along the way how to use Edgewonk and journaling in the most effective way so you get the best results for where you are in your trading. And we'll show you how the Edgewonk trading journal is designed to grow with you as a trader step by step. So first of all, I want to address why traders stop journaling. And we have developed Edgewonk many years ago with the thought in mind that journaling often is not the most pleasant activity that traders can imagine and many traders will eventually stop journaling. And here are the most common reasons. First of all, a lot of traders journal the wrong things and then eventually they don't see the results that they thought they would. Also, a lot of traders journal way too many things and they spend way too much time in their journal. And third, in general, many traders, they don't know what to journal based on the current stage the traders at, and then they deem journaling pointless because they're not getting anywhere and they're just wasting their time, so they think. So the goal of this four part video series is that we will help you get comfortable journaling. We'll help you establish a better routine using a journal and your trading. We want to help you remove or at least reduce trading mistakes step by step, which are caused by emotions and eventually by other factors. We want to help you trade with more confidence and also trade with more consistency. And all of those things can be achieved using a journal in the right way and also bringing awareness to a few things in your trading. So now let's address who is this for and by this I mean the first video in this series. And I would recommend this to any trader who has been trading for less than nine months or who still feels very emotional when trading or who feels that they are having inconsistencies in their trading performance but also in their behavior. And of course, traders who have never journaled or never journaled in a serious way, I would also recommend to watch this video. I will try to make the videos as short as possible while still giving you a lot of value. So the common questions that we get when it comes to journaling is when do you journal? And this depends a little bit on the trading approach that the trader is using. So we see that day traders, when you have a lot of trades every single day, then very often you journal at the end of the day. If you don't have time to do that at the end of each trading day, at least we would recommend do it twice a week so that you don't accumulate too many unjournaled trades. Or if you are a swing trader, you don't have too many trades or you're very busy during the week, then we would recommend doing it on the weekends. But it's really recommended to dedicate a specific time so that eventually this eventually becomes a routine in your calendar. Should you journal old trades? That's a very common question and a very important one to address. And typically we don't recommend journaling too many old trades since the learning effect will be much lower because very often you have already forgotten the trades that you've taken in the past. Your memory is maybe not accurate. You're often gonna journal wrong things about old trades. And also having to journal so many old trades may also seem daunting. So if you just want to get going with a journaling routine, we would recommend start right now with the trades that accumulate from now on. Don't worry about your old ones and just get going with your routine. And why to journal? which is obviously what we're going to cover during all of those videos. First, we're going to learn from mistakes using our journal so that we can reduce the mistakes, potentially have a higher win rate, do more of what works already and do less of what doesn't work. We will also get to know ourselves as traders much better. We'll increase our awareness for decision making so that we can make better decisions. And also, of course, we want to improve our trading performance on all fronts, which we're going to do during all of the video series. So when we come back to journaling for starters, if you just want to get going with a journaling routine and you just want to get the most out of it right away, first of all, to reduce the amount of time that you need journaling your trades, we would always recommend the minimal entry input. And I will show you exactly in Edgewonk in a moment how to do that. Also, I would recommend to save at least three trade screenshots per trade, one for the entry, one for the exit, and then one maybe an hour, maybe a day later. Also, we're gonna focus on process-oriented inputs, which is gonna help unlock one of the most important features in Edgewonk, 
And that's going to be the key because we're then going to focus on using the tilt meter, which is going to really help us understand our decision making. How disciplined are we? Do we break our rules? And we're going to learn a lot. And we're also going to use our milestones, which can even act like a motivator or like an invisible mentor that keeps you motivated to come back to your journal. And while you are trading, trade at your best. And we're going to focus on efficiency. So you can see this is very minimal. And now let's jump over to Edgewonk and I will show you exactly how to do that. So now we are here in the Edgewonk trading journal. And as you can see, there are just so many things. We can open the chart lab and we find so many features. And we understand this can be overwhelming. But as I said in the beginning of the video is that Edgewonk is going to grow with you. If you're just starting out, there's no point and no reason really why you should be using everything. I want to help you focus on what is really the most important. So first of all, we want to reduce the amount of time that we spend entering our trades. And for that, you can either use one of our imports. So we do support most of the common platforms which are listed here. And also I will put a link in the video description and you can just import your trades very quickly. If your platform is not listed here, you, you can still very easily enter your trades manually in the journal, add a trade. And what we recommend in the beginning to just get started, reduce the amount of inputs. So we want to focus obviously on the necessary information. When was the trade taken? What instrument was it on the setup or the strategy? And then here also the entry price, stop loss, take profit and exit price and the profit and loss. Beyond that, the only thing else we need to add to the trade is the trade comments, entry, exit and the trade management comments. And that's really it. We're not going to worry for now about the custom statistics. We're not going to worry at all about this. This is going to come later and don't worry about it. We really would just want to get started. And what happens is that if we enter the entry, the exit and the trade management comments, this will unlock the tilt meter. The tilt meter is here, for example, in our journal. You can see it's a dedicated column and it's either green or red. A red tilt meter means that you have repeatedly broken your trading rules. It could have been that you entered your trades too early, could have been that you mismanaged your trades while you're in it, or it could have been that you somehow screwed up the exit, maybe exited too late, maybe exited too early, but definitely not according to the plan. A green tilt meter on the other hand shows you that you made good trading decisions. You had a good entry, good trade management and or good trade exits. And that's really important. And as a beginning, what we would recommend, use this tilt meter like a challenge. Try to keep the tilt meter as green as possible and keep this thought in mind when you're actually in your trading session. Always think when you're about to take a trade, how will this impact my tilt meter? Will it cause the tilt meter to go red or green? And hopefully eventually this is going to lead to actually better trading decisions while you're taking a trade. And that way you can really connect the power of journaling and also your real trading decisions. For example, we can take here at this trade, we go to the advanced trade data and here we can see the entry comment is too early, exit comment is scared and trade management, no management. So the first entry and exit, they are negative trade comments, which because they show you that you made something against your trading plan and against your trading rules. On the other hand, here on this trade, we have a green tilt meter and you can see we had a perfect entry. The exit met all the rules and the trade management was not assigned here yet. But you can see we can choose between um, positive or negative or neutral comments. And one thing is important after you set up your journal, you can go to the settings, which is here. Then we go to the trade comments and here you find all your trade entries and you can set them up the way you want. You can pause this video, use this as an inspiration. And what you can do is then you enter your trade comments here and then you assign the rating. Is Does this comment describe a negative action, a positive or does it describe a neutral action? And that way you can really nicely start customizing your journal to your own trading needs, to your own trading behavior, but also to your own shortcomings. So that gets really personalized over time. Before we move on, I just want to spend a few moments on explaining why the tilt meter is the most important thing at this stage of your journaling. And the reason is that if you cannot follow your trading rules, no matter how good the strategy you're using is, you will not be able to realize the potential. Because if you keep breaking the rules and if you're not able to execute the strategy the way it is designed, you will fall short of the potential. And the weakest link of a trading business is always the trader himself and herself. That is why at this point we really need to work on our discipline. We need to improve our discipline and we need to make sure that we can follow the rules that we set for ourselves and that our trading strategy poses. 
And only if we can do that, then we can move on to the more advanced concepts of improving the strategy and improving our trading further. But this is step number one. And another thing besides the tilt meter, what we could recommend is the milestones. And we have a lot of milestones defined, but in the beginning, the bulletproof milestone is tied to the tilt meter. And the more trades that have a green tilt meter, the more and the faster you will progress through this milestone. So this is also a nice thing to keep in mind and a nice thing to focus on. So that journaling is not only this abstract thing, but you have actual goals that keep you motivated. The trade comments, exit entry and a trade management as I've shown you are also tied to the next milestones, sniper, escape artist and zen trader. As you can see, when you hover over it, you get the description. So the sniper is tied to the entries. So whenever you take an entry comment that is positive rated, this will affect the sniper milestone. The escape artist milestone is tied to the exit. So when you assign a positive trade exit comment, this will affect the escape artist and the Zen trader is tied to the trade management comment. So those are things you can also focus on. And then finally, without getting overwhelmed and to just get started, we can go to the chart lab and then here we have this graph efficiency. Efficiency shows you visualized in a different way your level of discipline. When you assign a negative trade comment to a trade, this will affect the efficiency in a negative way. If your trades have positive comments, then this will affect your efficiency in a positive way. So generally speaking, the more positive your trade comments are, the higher your efficiency is. And in the beginning, you can try to make a challenge. At least try to stay above a 50% efficiency, which means half of the time you make good trading decisions and half of the time you make maybe less optimal decisions. And there's no point in the beginning of trying to achieve 100% efficiency because that's not realistic and you're probably gonna demotivate you with that goal which is just too high. But try to pick a number or maybe what you can do is try to beat your last month efficiency, which can also be a great goal to have in mind. And Edgewonk in that way becomes a little bit more alive and not just a trading journal where you type in data. So I hope this helps you with the first lesson here and I hope you get something out of it. The most important thing is that you just get going. Don't overwhelm yourself with the journaling routine. And during this video series, we will then step by step uncover all of the different features and tools and I will show you exactly when to use it and how to use it in the most effective way.